I don't know if this recording. You're live. You are live. And okay. I don't know. Hi, six people. Yeah. Are we talking about something? Or are we just? Uh... I don't think so. I don't know. What do you want to talk about? What are you doing? I have something on my cup. <clears throat> What's going? God, I look old. Stop it. No, you don't. All right. All it right. is the slow chat. On. Now, That's look, what... now live. On, oh, it just said now live. Okay. <clears throat> you and Zach need to write and act in a movie. Your chemistry would so work. I can barely get Zach here to do a um to do a podcast that's that's hard enough i don't think he's gonna act in a movie we need to do a, a documentary on zach zach story zach's yeah. got a great story you need to write zach's story i'm going to i'm gonna i gotta work i'm working on the i have to finish another story first then i'm gonna write zach's story then i'm gonna try and get a documentary for him What's up from Winter Park? Hey, Winter Park. Hello from South Texas. I wonder if people can hear you. Oh, can what? you guys hear us? It's your wife, not your girlfriend. Remember that. <laughs> I think I said that on a podcast. I, I, I said girlfriend or something. And then I was like, I was like, I mean, wife, I mean, I mean, wife. Okay, they can hear us. That I keep messing up, making a mistake, or just, it's hard. It's hard. It's going to get easy, it's right? Uh, yeah, I'm good. Uh-huh. I don't want to have to beat you I love up. coffee. All right. What are we doing? Notifications work. Cool. Catch a lot. I love the stories. Um, what's up, Rockefeller 2? I don't know what that means. Rockford, Rockford 2. Rockford 2. Rockford. Remember, remember I showed you the Rockford Files? I made you watch that little clip of the Rockford Files? I don't remember. Remind me. The Rockford Files. I, I used to watch it with my dad. Hey, from Ireland. The Rockford Files. Remember I told you he was a, he lived in like a single wide trailer on, he was in California. Remember and we, I made you. Oh, yeah. Great. I love the, I used to love the Rockford Files. He was like a private eye, private investigator. And he would kind of like Magnum PI only. He, I thought he had to, he was cooler. Patrick from Atlanta, Georgia said, hey, he's a big fan. Cool. What's going on? Does anybody have any questions or what's up, Matt? We are in love with. Say hello to all my real estate students in Indiana. Real estate. What, what kind of real estate like does she actually teach? <clears throat> I think, did I talk to her? Remember I told you a real estate, uh, a woman that taught real estate or something, asked me some questions, mm -hmm. got on the phone with her and talked to her for a little bit. I don't know if that was her. I talked to too many people. Well, I mean, she's right there. You could ask. Well, oh, we've got slow. This they, is can't, good. they can't, they can't, is this easier? Well, it seems like they're responding. Yeah, but you, like, it only, it only lets you, we've got slow response I think or something it's one comment every minute every minute it lets through because the last time it was just like boom yeah. boom boom it's too much are you still in touch with frank amadeo no like he's in frank amadeo is in orlando he works in orlando at a law firm for, for what for my what i understand um but I have not reached out to him or, or he's nor has he reached out to me, even though he knows that I wrote a book. He knows the book selling. He knows I tell his story. He knows. 
I got it. Um, he knows all of that. In fact, on his his he has an Instagram where he actually has posted the book several times. Okay, every time I click, what the computer moves forward. So right, just so, it's good. I just need to balance it a little better. All right, Glenn, mental health nurse from Northern Ireland. Love the show. Please tell us about why you think your uncle was so negative about you in court. A disturbed person, he said. Yeah. I, I, so when I did my story, I mentioned that. Yeah. I have no idea why. The guy, you know, he just, he has always, he's got two sons, which I'm sure he absolutely tormented. And which are my obviously my cousins, but he has I, he's every time he's ever been around me, he's just messed with me nonstop. I have no idea why. This is new. I didn't know this. What? The tapes were set free. Oh yeah, I saw that today. Oh, okay. But that was it. Like it was a it was a all I <clears throat> was able to see was a little clip that said they were set free. They're on like home. Like they, the judge said, Hey, we can't, we can't, I, he just didn't believe there was enough evidence to hold them anymore. So he let them go and they're at their house in Romania, uh, kind of like on confinement. When are you going back on concrete? I mean, whenever Danny, you know, Danny invites me on concrete when, he has a guest fall through or he's short on guests. I mean, I'm not like, it's not like I have a whole new, you know, so, um, story to tell or something. I guess I could talk about one of, one of the stories I've written, but for the most part, he's, you know, if he asked, I'd go. I need to get in the sun. How pale. What is that? Sound? I know I saw that. Connor, whereabouts are you? Yeah, you're going to have to. I know I saw that, Connor. Whereabouts are you? I think that's two different sentences. I think he means whereabout are you? So we're in Tampa. We're um, about nor just north of Tampa. We live just north of Tampa in an area called Wesley Chapel. And Connor lives in an area of Tampa called... Um, Oh gosh, Carolwood. Carolwood. He's saying he, that's where Connor lives. Oh. No, wait. Carolwood, Miami. No, no. Carolwood, there's a Carolwood, Tampa. Uh -huh. In Tampa. It's like a suburb. Liverpool. Somebody's watching from Liverpool. Nice. Your hair looks great, bro. <sighs> uh. I know, thanks. I worked hard on it. <laughs> What are we on? What's going on? Do you hear that clicking? Yeah. What would you consider a, a good pair of shoes? One that gives him two inches at least. I can put. You can put. I, I put the 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 what are the, the, the insoles? Insoles. Yeah, insoles. I put a, an insole in there. I'm good. It's got a nice heel. Something with a heel. Two inches. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be mean. I, I, I'm not. Who is the most interesting person you've ever had a conversation with? I feel like this is a commercial. Uh, most interesting. <laughs> he talks to himself, so that would be the answer. Um, I don't know. I mean, it. it that's a good question. That's a good question. You've met so many people, though, so many different. Like, can you really narrow it down? Pete is pretty interesting. Pete is interesting. Pete is pretty interesting. Um, that's a good question. I have to think about that. I mean, it would it would probably be a toss up between Pete and and probably Amadeo, right? Yeah, for sure. This is funny. This is sad, actually. Do you got Indian feather in your family? So, <clears throat> do I have Indian in me? Um, no. 
I don't. So sad. Disappointed. I, I, I have high cheekbones. I look Indian, right? Um, I get that a lot. Matt is not Indian either. I thought I had Indian in me, but... Because his dad told him his whole life that... My whole life, did. my dad said we had Indian in us. In, in fact, he, like I was saying the other day, we went uh, canoeing one time when I was younger, and my mom was spraying a mosquito, like, you know, repellent on her. And she said, asked my dad if he wanted some, and he said, no, he said, I'm Indian. They don't bite me. And he said, you don't have to spray anything on that either. He's Indian too. Like this guy 100% believed he was Indian and I have no Indian in me, but I also look just like my dad. I have very, a lot, the same coloration of my dad. I mean, I look just like him too. So it's not like I need to ask my mom, uh, you know, a serious question. Um, but regardless, yeah, I don't know. You should do a podcast with Bustamante. I should, especially since I met Bustamante and introduced him, bugged the hell out of Danny until Danny had Bustamante on his, on concrete. And, and Danny didn't even want to he's like who is this guy i don't understand why do i want him on i mean i bugged the hell out of him and now he's had him on multiple times loves him uh and you know he's gone on to do all these other things and i i, I texted bustamante and he always kind of like oh I'm, I'm out of the i'm out of the country for the next month or i'm this i'm that so i've gotten to the point where it's like I, he's kind of spun me so many times i've just kind of you know stopped pursuing it but i should pursue it Somebody said this? that your coffee cup is a bucket. It's so it's, big. This is. <coughs> it's not enough. I, I, this is probably maybe six cups, five or six cups today. Oh, my God. I know. It's a lot. What are you doing? I don't know. I just. It's good, though. No. I'm a door-to-door -door solar sales guy. Any tips? Solar sales? I, I don't. Everybody thinks I'm like a, a, a natural salesman. You are. I'm not. I'm just. I don't, I, you think? Yeah. I have never sold uh, solar panels. Um, I, would, I would think that solar panels were, would be not that difficult to sell since it's obvious it adds value to the home, right? It helps with your electric. Mm -hmm. They kind of pay for themselves. Mm -hmm. That's how just a numbers, that's just a numbers game though. How long do you have to have them before they pay for themselves though? Isn't it like five or ten years? Yeah, but if if, if you're financing, you know, twenty thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars on your home, if you're financing thirty thousand dollars and the payment is two hundred dollars, but it saves you one hundred and eighty dollars a month or two hundred dollars, or you're even maybe you're selling some of the electric back because you're actually saving more, then it kind of pays for itself or it breaks even. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's how it works, but who knows? I don't have any idea. Has anyone ever reached out to you that's currently on the run? Yes. Yeah. Right. I've had that happen a few times. I had a great conversation with this guy who was, uh, the police were looking for him. He had, it was essentially, he'd taken a bunch of money to help people with NFTs. And, and he, people had paid him tons and tons of money to put up the NFTs, to help promote the NFTs. And I forget what had happened, but he basically, he, there were, he was, he'd essentially ended up with basically taking hundreds of thousands of dollars from people that he still owed the work to. And he was living in like Indonesia or I, I forget, you know, but he was like out of the country and he was terrified and he found out that the FBI was looking for him. And I was telling him, look, if you want, I will call the public defender's office and help and have them call and see, you know, what you're facing, that sort of thing. But anyway, we talked a few times and then he stopped when he, when he heard that my advice was you're going to have to turn yourself in, get yourself released on bond and start fighting the charges or come up with some kind of a plea deal. He didn't want to hear that. He wanted to hear like, here's how you get a fake ID and a fake passport and you can run the rest of your life. Like I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that. Like that's the wrong, that's just the wrong, it's, that's just a bad approach because eventually it will catch up with you. All right. So 
So when he found out I wouldn't help him bury himself, right. you know, or, or then he, he stopped talking to me. Um, <clears throat> I've had a couple, remember the couple of guys, remember the one guy that was going to come on the podcast? Yeah, he, he had a great story. The young guy? Young guy, great story. He's in jail right now. He was about to go. He'd already pled guilty. He was about to be sentenced in about a month or two. And he was going to come on. He was he was a reshipper. He was getting drugs and guns and uh, stuff sent to him. And then he was reshipping it to other people. So people were buying stuff like on the dark web or something. And he had he had drugs in the United States in a storage unit. And he would get orders every day and he would ship out stuff. And he would get paid. He was making tons of money. He's making twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a month doing this. Eventually, he got caught. It's funny because he had actually cooperated and helped get somebody busted in the UK that was that he was shipping um, parts for guns in the US for. Anyway, the point is, is that uh, before he came on the podcast, his he talked to his lawyer. His lawyer said, "Absolutely not." You know, so yeah, and then he disappeared, and he uh, by the, by now he's been sentenced and he's in jail. He was already he was going to get a couple of years. All right, so plan on going to the UK. I mean, have you been to the UK? Yeah, I've been, I've been twice, um, but I haven't been since I got out. Uh, I would, if I did, like I would probably go. I'd probably go on Sean Atwood. I've been on his show a couple of times. He's told me if I ever get back over there that he wants me to come on his show, but I don't have any plans. Wait, so who's just to you? This is my, this is my wife. Wife. Oh. What? Are you clicking on something? I'm reading. This guy wants to know what movie he should watch tonight. Have, did you ever watch Heat? You've asked me that like five times. Heat's one of my favorite movies. How are the documentaries or movies going? Updates, please. Um, oh man, this they would they would probably kill me. But it basically, in the very near future, stuff is being pitched to Netflix. Um, two other people, right? Oh yeah, I've got, I've got. So I'm working with somebody on doing a documentary for me. Um, they're now shopping it. And um, Boziak and uh, another one called Atonement, which is a guy, uh, Joseph Vitale. And I'm working or I'm talking to a couple producers about some other, some other projects. You know, everything just takes forever. That's if it ever even happens. But who knows? You know, I, I like talking to these guys. I like pitching it. I um, what else? Talked in. I spoke in front of the Hillsborough County um, Financial Crimes uh, Office uh, for about thirty or forty detectives. Um, um, what, what do you what financial or, or economic? They call them economic economic crimes detectives. I've done that twice in the last, what, two weeks? Mm -hmm. Supposed to talk in front of the international, it's like called like the International Association of Economic and Financial Crimes, um, some convention. I'm supposed to talk in front of them in a couple months. I'm talking in front of some cyber. Like I got a bunch of, I, I need to start doing more keynote speaking. All right. So and, Jess went, and Jess went with me on the last one. Yeah, super cool. Do you think you would have made it longer on the run with someone like me instead of Becky? Yeah, because Jess is, is less of a problem. Like, she's not going to get the police called on me. She's not going to have a screaming match at 2 o'clock in the morning. She's m more mentally stable. Uh, Becky was somebody that, that in, invites Drunk. police presence. Oh, yikes. <laughs> Do you have anything to say about Andrew Tate's release? Um, I'm just saying, the, you know, I, I'm, I'm sure he's going to fight the charges. It doesn't sound like there's much of a case. 
But then I didn't think there was much of a case against Trump either, and they just indicted him. Ha ha, I'm that guy still on the run, sort of. I, this guy would be great to paid be. everyone back mostly mostly they dropped all big civil cases and currently building a successful software business well then we should then you should do a podcast yeah. we should do a podcast on that on what happened We're, i wonder where he was see we the problem is we have slow the slow thing so it takes like a minute for his uh for his response like where was he was in like was it Asia or he? I forget where he was when he was talking to me. Is this him? Is that, it's gotta be. This may be him. All right. Yeah, this is back in September. Is this the guy? Uh, what was his name? Something Cracker. Sergeant Cracker. Sergeant Cracker. That's his username. He was a young kid. Well, somebody just said, sent me something saying, I'm assuming this is him. I have a friend that programs viruses to do or to get credit cards, get CC information and, and sells it online. It doesn't really fulfill him, him, but he doesn't want to stop. What would you tell him to do? Doesn't really fulfill him. So he doesn't like doing it. I don't understand the question. Like, I mean, it's illegal. You know, it's illegal. Eventually it'll catch up to him and then he'll wish he had done something else. I mean, I, what would I say? I would suggest you find something you like doing that's not illegal and isn't going to end up in, in prison because it's not worth it. And I hate saying that because it's such a, a, a cliche thing to say, but it's, it, it really, when it, it boils down to it, it's just, it's just true. You know, get into something you like other than that. You know, I don't know what you're interested in. Or at least move out of that. You know, if you can't just walk away financially right now, then move away as quickly as you can. Because if your long-term strategy is fraud, you know, it's just a bad, that's just a bad situation. All right. Um Here's this. What are you talking about at these conventions? Do they pay you? Um, yeah, well, I, I didn't ask to be paid by the, for law enforcement, I don't ask to be paid. And, but typically, yeah, they pay me. So as far as what I talk about is I, I essentially, I just tell my story. I talk about how I became, you know, how I started committing fraud, how the fraud, you know, evolved. And it depends, you know, I tailor each talk depending like if it's if it's a bunch of let's say let's say it's a bunch of um let me think um like i'll talk at universities i'll do like a, a they call them um, um forensic accounting so if it's forensic accounting then i would talk to students and i would talk to them more about how let's say you know how i went about you know tricking closing you know closing companies to cut me checks you know i would focus more towards things that were more um related to opening up bank accounts closing them uh getting cash out doing wire transfers from one bank account to another how many bank accounts i could open how i overcame those things because that's more for auditing if it's law enforcement then i talk more about acquiring, you know, ha setting up the scam, how I knew I could get around certain things, doing more uh, social networking, social engineering, how I figured out how to do things. And then if I talk to someone, let's say I talk to mortgage brokers, I talk, I talk about how, look, it's a slippery slope. I, you know, you kind of gear the, the story toward them. I basically tell my story, but I gear it more toward like if it's loan officers and I'm like, look, you know, I, I started off really slow, like with this one little thing. And I didn't think it was a big deal, but I became emboldened by it. And then the next thing was easier and easier and easier. And I kept justifying it to myself. But I kept thinking just this one more time. And once I do this, I'll never do it again. And, you know, so that's kind of what I talk about at the conventions. It just depends on who you, you have to know your audience. All right. So are you still doing paintings? This guy, his email 
Are you still doing payments? Uh, oh, it would be in the description. Will be in the description. Whose email will be yours in the... for the painting or Etsy? Well, it's it's Etsy. You can you can go to Etsy. It's it's Cox Pop Art. The name of my store on Etsy is Cox Pop Art. I'm pretty sure you can send me a an e you can you can contact me through Etsy. I mean, my email address is Inside True Crime at gmail.com like it's pretty pretty easy insight it's the same as matter of fact if you go on the channel and you go to the side whatever they call that thing i forget what they call it what is it about the channel I, my my email address is in the channel description like my listen if you make any attempt at all you can get in touch with me i always love that like hey will you, can you put it in the thing no no make an effort all right do you know who Oscar Pistorius? I've is? heard the name. It sounds very familiar. Uh, got denied in front of his parole board. Do you know the case? At what point in your life, in your life, you were at, do you know what point in your life you were at when he shot his girlfriend? Nah, bro. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I, I, I know the name, but I'm not sure. Nice topic. Please don't argue. Who? What? That's what it says. Nice topic as you're newly married. Please don't argue. <laughs> Matt Love the Pod Podcast. Let's see. Can you invite Damien? Say it. I don't know. Somebody. Yeah, to, to your show. He's a guy who spent 20 years on death row and got out about 10 years ago. He's pretty open about his experience. I think he would be a great addition. Um, I mean... Is this the guy that was accused of killing his girlfriend? You know what? Here's, here's what we're going to do. Look at this. I'm gonna do this right here. What'd you do? I didn't do anything. You touched the. Okay. What's his name? Damien. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Can we get this guy on the show? Question mark. There. I just sent it to my booking agent. He's amazing. His name is Tyler. He will probably track this guy down. But I mean, like people are like, hey, can you get such and such? Would you, you have to understand you're sending me on a mission. I got to track the person down, figure out who he is, find the contact information, get in touch with him, schedule a time for him where he's available. Like, I mean, th that's all. That's a whole like if you can actually send me his information. That helps a lot. Accuse him. Of a bunch of kids, a bunch of kids. What? I I just I don't, I don't understand why people can't speak. In any idea sentences. where infamous ghost money is? He didn't show up a long time. Infamous? Do you know who that is? Yeah, that's the guy with the mask. The guy that, that, remember? Yeah. He hasn't been on his. He hasn't been posting in a while. You know, I I think he kind of stopped posting. I mean, he, he went long stretches. He said he was going to start posting more often, though. So I don't know what happened. I know he had it. It's like, like it's not like it's not like I'm thinking to myself he had a, a you know he was committing fraud and he might have got picked up or anything because I remember we talked and he had like a regular job. Like he he's you know he he wasn't like a scammer that was also doing a YouTube thing. He was he genuinely had like a real job. And he was doing YouTube, so he's probably just working on stuff. Do you think Logan Paul will ever see the inside of a prison, or will he flip first? He'd flip. He would flip. I mean, he would flip. He's not, you know. For, first of all, he let's assume he didn't. Let's assume he got himself in trouble. He probably, he no matter what, the first time, unless you've stolen millions and millions and millions of dollars and you fight them, you're pretty much going to get probation your first time unless you just less it's outrageous and it's just millions. But and the thing about him is he's got enough money. He can kind of make everybody whole. 
So e even then, let's assume he did something and no matter what, he had to do 18 months. Like, why would you flip on somebody for eight, flip on anybody for for 18 months to not do 18 months? He's basically 18 months. It's not even worth unpacking. I mean, you'd be in and out. You'd be in prison. You'd read a couple of, you'd read, you know, 10 or 20 books. He'd work out. He'd be right back out. He'd be in the halfway house. He, he wouldn't even do a year on 18 months. No. He'd do eight or nine months because he'd be in the halfway house. And, and, and especially him with his pull and his money, psh, he'd barely do any time at all. That's assuming if it ever caught up with him. You know who that is? You should do a podcast. Well, Michael Shrinker? Mm -hmm. Or is that? Shrinker. That, that's, not, no, not, that's not. That's, no, I know it's not your Shrinker, but. Yeah, that's Michael. What it says. That's what's so funny. So that's not Marcus Shrinker, Michael Shrinker. I don't know who that is. Is that his son? I don't know. Um, um, but I mean, you know, like send me an email. Let me, t you know, I got to talk to the person first and figure out what the story is. I don't know who Michael Shrinker is. Um, he had a son, but I don't think it was Michael. That he even has, he even has um, Michelle photo. and Marcus Shrinker's photo it. as his thumbnail. That's great. Did he just, oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't know who this is. But, yeah, definitely. I mean, why don't you email me? Email me. My email address is inside true crime at gmail.com. Not hard to get in touch with me. Send me an email. We'll arrange a time to talk. You can tell me why you think we should do, you know, a podcast. For all, we, for all I know, maybe that's Michael, maybe that's uh, Marcus Shrinker's brother. I forget what his name was. I don't know. I got the book. Hey, Matt. I love your videos, man. Just finished your book. Nice. Could please go to Amazon and leave a review on Amazon for the book. It only has to be a couple of, you know, it can say, hey, you know, what a great read or just say something real quick and just put a put a review up there. It, it, it helps. I appreciate that. Thank you. Or, you know, maybe it sucked. I don't think it sucked, though, but I doubt it sucked. I've never had anybody say it sucked. Love Patty? the video. What? Get Patty on the show. I know Patty. Or uh, I know Patty. We're friends. We're friends. I don't know who Patty is. Patty Pimblet. I don't know who that is. Okay. Like, yeah, you got to give me more than that. Get Patty. I mean, Michael Shrinker is on podcast with ex-con Haywood. It doesn't make sense. Ex Mike, I don't understand why, why people speak so. This guy says, what's up from Palmetto? Great live tapping. Oh, this is a Michael tapping. Shrinker. I don't know. You know, this is this is a rock star guy. I, this is somebody else. Look, bro, uh, work with me here. Oh, Patty Pimblett is a UFC fighter. We should definitely get her on. <sighs> I, don't, I got enough problems with you. You need to be beating me up. Um, <laughs> would, does she have a, a crime story? Does Patty have a crime story? You know what I mean? It's like Tyler saying, "Hey, I I, I met a guy. He's a yeah, caterer. Yeah, but he should know. come on the podcast." <laughs> what do you mean? They know <laughs> that you're a true crime. Or... What? Yeah. So I... so does Tyler. Yeah. And he'll say, yeah, "Hey, I met a guy. I was on a bus, and I met a guy, and he's got great stories." And Patty's a guy. Patty's a guy. Okay. See, I don't know anything about this. I don't either. How's Zach? I mean, Zach's doing well. We did several videos the other day of him. I have to edit those videos and uh, put them up on his channel and make some thumbnails. Probably going to try and uh, incorporate uh, 
Colby in that whole scenario to help me and figure something out. We got to get some more videos up for Zach. He's doing, he's doing great. He's got a new job. He loves his job. He has a beat to hell vehicle that he's driving around. It's horrible. I thought he blew it up. I think they fixed it. I mean, he's like literally borrowing. He's borrowing cars from his brother. He's borrowing cars from this guy. He's borrowing cars from his sister. I mean, everybody's like lending him a car. He's, he's just, he's in a, he's in bad shape as far as transportation is concerned. I, I'm not going to tell you that somebody just called you little Cox. That's fine. Um, There was one. That's just... You know better. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I, mean? <laughs> I love you. Mm. Oh, I love you, baby. Okay. <laughs> hey, what's up, Matt and Jess? Just getting off work. How's the day so far? Um, also, quick question, Matt. You got any interviews lined up with Haleen Hallen Flowers? Do you know who that is? No, I don't know who that if is. If not, you should definitely interview him. Well, we should take a picture of that and look him up, too. With who? I don't, I don't understand what these, what's going on. Okay, watch this. Okay, we're doing this. Uh, there, there it is. Okay. <laughs> All right, I just sent that to Tyler too. Uh, Let's see what he can what? what he can come up with. Like, who is that? Like, how am I? I don't understand who that person even is. Like, it, you know, give me something that I can. If I Google that name, I don't know. That's kind of unique. Something would probably show up. All right, so okay, what happened? Michael Shrinker. I married his daughter Alyssa, but I took her last name. I put the profile picture so you would recognize him. I got released early February. Got some good stories. Are you Sounds serious? You interesting. First of all, you married his daughter and you took her last name. Like, I mean, I mean, of all, um, I don't even know what to say about that. Uh, but, Stop. but, God, it's it's. I'm dying to know why you took her last name. I mean, not that shrinkers. I'm just saying in general, taking your wife's last name. Ooh, maybe you've got a bunch of felonies, but still you just, the, said just got out. right. So maybe taking her last name helps with that. Whoa. Yeah. No, it's all right. It just, it just doesn't. Okay. Listen, I've had every problem in um, I don't know what, what, what the, I'd love to know the story behind that, but yeah, it, send me an email. Like, what do we get? We're, how, we're not going to be able to arrange anything right now. Send me an email. My email address is inside true crime at gmail.com. Send me an email with your information or with your phone number. I will call you or I will send you an email back, give you my, my information. We can text, we can figure it out and we'll arrange a time. Yeah. We can do it at a stream yard. Look at this guy. Oh my God, Black Zach. Can we get a conversation going? What's your topic? <laughs> it's there's no topic. It's what the people want. It's <laughs> it's whatever. There's no there's no there's no specific topic. Listen, Zach. He, I would ask him to donate five dollars, but he wouldn't. He wouldn't even know. He wouldn't know how to figure it out. He'd be like, I don't know how to do that. I don't understand. Every time I talk to him, he's like, I don't. I Listen, he's worse with technology than I ever was. And he, I don't even think he's trying. Yeah, he probably isn't. He's not making better not to know because then he doesn't have to send you $5. Stop. What do you think about going around the country and showing mortgage companies holes in their systems for consulting fee? I mean, I think that would be great. Everybody always has an idea that requires me to dedicate a chunk of my time to get it off the ground. I never have anybody come to me and say, hey, let me do this and I will take a piece of it because that would require them to donate or to 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 donate that would take that would require them to put up a bunch of their time and take a bunch of their time toward an endeavor that may or may not pay off. Like, I mean, I could make that effort, but. Does it pay off? I don't know. And do I, how many hours a day do I dedicate that until I eventually figure out that's not a thing? I can't make that work. And as far as holes, you know, I, I think that these guys have professional fraud guys or professional 
um, you know, security experts that have done as much as they can. The problem is, and I was talking about this to this with the uh, these detectives, uh, whatever, last week, where it's like you can put up measures where fraud would almost be impossible to commit to do. The problem is it would also make it almost impossible for the average person to get a loan. And so you end up saying, OK, there's a balancing act. How difficult do we make it so that you can't commit fraud, but so that normal people can still obtain the benefit of getting a loan and there there really is kind of a balancing act there and i just feel like we're there like you there's just a certain amount of fraud you're just going to have to accept which sucks but yeah that that would be great that'd be something i would love to do but i don't know besides that most fraud is committed by by, by mortgage brokers who know the system so it's almost impossible to stop them Hi, Jess. I was recently on Pat's pod. Okay. This is this. Um, I, I did. This is the Ponzi scheme guy. Okay. He meant Matt's pod. Okay. Okay. Mur. But he's a big drinker. Oh, <laughs> well, he doesn't like me, but I would be an unbelievable, unbelievable guest to reinvite. Tell him. He's a drinker. So sometimes, you know, was he drunk while he was? I think he was had a, some drink, so a little bit of some drinks. He'd probably just take the edge off. He's he's Canadian, so it's he's Canadian and he's French, so I don't know what was going on. He was hilarious. Well, that's he would be plus. hilarious to hang out with, like okay. just super funny. He laughs all the time. Well, come hang out and maybe you could sway him to get back on the podcast. For him to be back that's on the what podcast, he said. yeah, yeah, he could be back on the podcast. I thought he was super funny. Okay, I'm going. A buddy and I were discussing your acquisition of IDs a few days ago. You did the I, that ID acquisition almost 20 years ago. Have measures been put in place no. to stop your method from working? No, they haven't. What about the little star? What does that mean? The star doesn't mean anything. The, I, the star is for counterfeiting. I wasn't counterfeiting the IDs. Right, I was right. walking in and getting the DMV to issue me a driver's license. If you walk in with, if the person's never had a driver's license in that state, for example, if I got all this information in North Carolina and I got there, the person had, let's say had a driver's license in North Carolina, but never had one in Florida. So I got, if I got their birth certificate, social security card, and maybe even I got a, a, a copy of their driving record or I registered and I registered to vote here in Florida, then I could walk into the DMV without a license and say, Hey, I just moved to the state. Um, I'm, I need to get a driver's license. I'm from North Carolina. And they would look at my documents. I have one primary, which is my birth certificate, two secondaries, which would be my registration to vote um, and my my social security card. And then they would want proof of residency. And I could have and they could use my registration to vote in the state of Florida as residency for the first like 60 days or something after it's issued. And they would say, sit over there. And 10 minutes later, they call me, take my picture and give me a driver's license. So, I mean, it, nothing's changed. And if they made it more difficult, then the average person wouldn't be able to get a driver's license. So, yeah, it's absolutely possible. I will email you. I'm living in Northdale near Tampa. Get out of here. <laughs> the last name is a long story, but it protected me in some ways. I'll, I'll, Aww. I hear, I know, <laughs> I hear you. I know what you, I, I got you. I understand. I mean, sometimes, you know, you got to do what you got to do. Why are you not allowed to own stocks? What does that have to do with the stuff you did? So, um, I, I'm, I'm not positive why I was just told by my, by my, um, my first probation officer, I wasn't allowed to trade crypto or own any types of stocks. And I, she said, do you? Because you would have to sell them. And I said, no. So I'm not sure what the rule, I'm not sure if that is a, I'm not sure if that is a probation rule or if that is maybe just a rule in general. I just know I didn't have any. And she said, good, because you're not allowed to have in them. If you're planning on investing in them, you're not allowed to. And don't buy, you're not allowed to trade crypto either. So that's what she told me. 
Whether or not any of that's true or not, who knows? But I listen, I don't have the kind of money. I don't have money to be buying and trading stocks, even if, you know, I wanted to or investing in crypto or any of those things. All right. So the, this is back to the IDs. It's all online, though. So how would you fake the? It's what's online. You know I what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, like, like formulate an entire sentence that makes sense. It's all online though. So how would you fake the, yeah, I'm assuming fake the ID. Yeah, like fake. what is on, like, I'm not sure what he, what, what, what the question is. Okay, so I know in MD, they keep your picture on file and the surrounding states like Pennsylvania, blah, 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 blah. But they that may not be station, station, nationwide. No, nationwide. No, it's a hub system. And typically what they do is they ask. So let's say you go into, um, say I go to Nash, to Tennessee. Well, if Tennessee says, it, first of all, they would have to think something was wrong. They'd have to look at the documents and say, something's not right here. And then they would request from Florida a, cop, a picture of your driver's license. That take, they have like 72 hours to provide it. So if you walked in, if they said, oh, I don't know, come back in three days or, you know, call in three days to, you know, whatever. Well, then you already know, okay, they're ordering my driver, my, my, my photograph from another state. But the truth is I'm walking in with legitimate real documents. And when they pull my record, it's not like there's a warrant out for my arrest or there's a, like in the other, in the state of Florida, it says that I've got a DUI. Like this is a person who legitimately has a, has a driver's license that's expired in another state or doesn't have one at all in the other state. And so his record's good. I've even gotten guys information, pulled their driver's license where they owed three or $400 in back tickets and paid the tickets off just to clear his driver's license up so I could get a driver's license in his name. Now, it's not like I'm going, it's not like he's the, the person has had a driver's license in Florida where his picture's on file and then I walk into Florida and they pull up the picture. That would be stupid. I'm going, I go to a state where they've never had it. Well, I would go to a state, I don't do that anymore. Matt. I do have a question actually. How can Frank or any prison lawyer uh, represent people if your license is revoked? How is that possible? Well, anybody can file their paperwork. Wait, like, anybody can, right, right. I could represent Jess. I can't charge her for it, but I could do her paperwork. And um, Frank, when I say he's working at a law firm, he's not working at the law firm as a lawyer. He's not charging people as a lawyer. He can work as a paralegal. He couldn't go into court as an attorney. He can't charge, but he can certainly work for an attorney as a paralegal. So, um, and as far as, you know, being in prison representing guys, there's a, a law that says, the Supreme Court said that inmates are allowed to help other inmates with legal work. You're allowed to do that. He's not allowed to charge, although a lot of inmates do represent other inmates and charge. Frank never charged. Um, what are your thoughts on Sammy the Bull? Him and yourself are the only true crime cons I have any interest in listening to. The fact that you aren't wealthy is very strange to me. <laughs> Is Sammy the is Sammy the is Sammy uh have a podcast? You know, he's got one. Oh, okay. But I, I've never I've watched it. I mean, I've watched bits and pieces of interviews with him. And, you know, I don't know what I mean, what, what's my thoughts on him? I mean, you know, he was uh John Gotti's kind of right right hand man and and you know, trigger and Gotti kind of turned on him and he turned on Gotti and you know, he has his take on it and people have their take on him. And I think, uh, you know, I think he did some time and got out and that's it. I'm like, I don't have any, I don't have any strong opinions on him. I'm just not super interested in mob in mob guys and that lifestyle. It seems extremely violent to me. I don't really understand it. I, I, 
it, it's a lot of extortion and things like that. And it, it just doesn't interest me in forcing someone to pay you so you don't, what, throw a rock through their window or beat them up or something like that. That's not my kind of, that's not my thing. I'm sure he's a very nice person. He never did anything to me. I think he did murder several people. But he never murdered me. So I don't have an issue with him. Where's Frank at now? What? This is a new shirt. It's got a little bump. Frank is in Orlando. And I believe I believe the last I heard, he, he was working for a law firm. Not as a lawyer, but as like a paralegal or doing something. I forget. Maybe just consulting. I'm not sure. He's out on bond. Or not on bond. He got out on, I, th I believe he got out on the CARES Act and he's got like an ankle monitor. He, he's allowed to work. He has an apartment. He's just, you know, living his life. What are your views on the Trump situation? And, and I'm pretty sure that Frank is probably building some mega conglomerate right now. And sorry. Stop. <laughs> Listen, mentally, he's just not going to be able to not do something insane like that. Um, on the Trump situation, I mean, I think it's silliness. I think it's, I, I think it's silliness. I think that any damage that state prosecutor thought he was doing to Trump, he probably just got him more votes than he will have ever lost him. Yeah. And and I think it it's absolutely ridiculous. It's a misdemeanor that the statute of limitations is up on. You know, it it's so it's so over the top political that it's it's just distasteful i mean if nothing else even if you completely dislike trump which i i totally get that he was the president of the united i might not like like biden but i would be nothing but respectful to him he is the president of the united states he is your president you should respect him you don't you don't have to agree with everything but president was i mean trump was president at one time you know you, you have to be respectful of the office and I just think it's an asshole thing to do to go that far back. And, you know, what, what are you doing? Yeah. I mean, who hasn't paid somebody, you know, to keep things in? Yeah. Room yeah. Room? Listen, you can't just be going back that long, drudging stuff up. Right. Like, how like, long? Like, you don't think his wife gave him enough trouble? You know, Melania gave this dude. He's already gone through hell. If he He's went, still going through hell. If this just drums it up. Listen, going to prison, maybe, you know, if, if Trump had to do six months, like it might be a, he might be happy about that. Like he's got like a, a reprieve. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Matt, love the channel. I'm a newer attorney switching my practice into criminal defense outside of a good result. What do you think makes a good criminal defense attorney from an inmate view? I don't, I don't think, I, first of all, I don't think I've ever met it. I don't think I've ever met uh, a criminal a criminal defense. defense attorney that truly cared. Yeah. Like, I, I think, God, I've had, I've had some horrendous attorneys. I've had some good attorneys. I, I honestly just think being honest with your, with your client, I think being honest with your client is, and, and really listening to what they're, what they're saying and just being honest with them is, listen, my first attorney, my first attorney, with zero dollar loss on a federal federal charge of wire fraud, zero dollar loss, my first attorney had me convinced that I was probably going to end up going to prison with wire fraud, zero dollar loss, almost no enhancements. I couldn't have even gone to, to, to prison for that. I paid this guy seventy five thousand dollars to give me a de to get me a deal of three years paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, just for like, like, you know, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think probably just listening to your client and representing them and, you know, and just being honest with them. Do you think he'll run in 2024 or can he, if he gets charged? Yeah. It, it, there's nothing stopping. I could run for president. Yeah. So yeah, he can run for president if he's charged. That makes no difference at all. What, what are we doing? It's this. I don't know. I'm looking for questions. Oh. Um, we're going to have some fur babies, right? I'm not having kids. <clears throat> we, we, everybody. We need a dog. No way. Before 
And listen, kids are before before what? <laughs> I was gonna. Listen, there's no, I caught there's myself. No. I caught myself. We, we don't. I don't even want to get a dog. Yes, you do. I mean, I would like to get a dog. Like if we had a backyard, and we have a we backyard, have... but we don't have a fence. We don't. We rent from somebody. You know, I, I would like like a little Frenchie or something. Like they're super cute. But my buddy Vitaly has one, and they they snort all the time, and they have medical problems. But the next door neighbor has a great a great one. Like if we could rent. The next door neighbor's dog, you know, 10 hours a week. Like, I think that would satisfy the curiosity and, and, and play with them and stuff. And you just send them home. Mm, it wouldn't. And, you know, and they're, they're, they, they shed. I mean, they're great, but, you know, I, 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 I don't know. A dog would be great if you could hire somebody to take care of it. Or if you had a kid that could take care of it. It was their responsibility, and all you had to do was play with the dog. You are here all day. You can take right. care of it. Right. I will take care of it. Exactly. That's the, that's exactly, that is exactly what would happen. I would take care of the dog. I would walk the dog. I would feed the dog. I would, and then, then Jess would come home. She'd go upstairs. She'd take a shower. She'd get out of the shower, and she'd play with the dog for a couple hours. And then for the next 20 hours, it would be my responsibility, even though she would say, I'm going to take care of him, all this. I, she wouldn't. She would walk in once a day, maybe twice, and then every once, but it'd really be me. That's not true. It, most of the time, it would be me taking care of them. As long as I'm home, I will take care of them. You're home. never home. You work 50 hours a week. Okay, you the could... rest of the time, I'll take care of the dog. I'm home all the time. It would be my dog. You need something to keep you company. I, I really don't. I listen to YouTube. Don't get a dog. Yeah, exactly. Oh, whose genetics are impaired. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Let's get a well, like an old like, cur dog. They can no. live through anything. You can leave them things outside. Um, and just, yeah. Not, I don't even know what a cur dog a cur is. Cur dog. You know, it's a hunting dog. The Indians used to run around with them. No, they're they can live through. No, they're not. Looking. So you just take care of them. I don't want to talk about All this. All right, let's talk about something else. <laughs> We're gonna get a dog one day. What? I don't know what this says. I can't. Here's a good question. On a daily basis, how many times are you conflicted keeping are you conflicted keeping the good normal life or starting the biggest scam ever? Listen, what are you doing? Yeah, we can't. We we can't. Just let's stop. We can't we can't ask questions from anyone. I mean, how many times a day? No, not 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 uh, not ever. Well, maybe every day, but I I I think about stuff. Probably when things go yeah when bad, when but... when things start getting tight like i start worrying about money i do my mind immediately starts going through the motions but but and and thinking if you were to do this it, it be, for some reason it calms me down like if i lay in bed at night and i'm 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 worrying or my mind is racing i'll start taking step by step if you were to do something, what would you do? How would you do it? Where would you go? How would you get this? Where would you do this? How would you? And I start doing that. Listen, I go, it's so it's so comforting to me. I go right to sleep. Sorry, I'm looking. Uh -huh. I don't know. How can I succeed as a criminal in 2023? Wait, what are you Who doing? is this? And how come you didn't bury, didn't? How come you didn't basically bury money for a rainy day? Because I didn't think I was going to get caught right. because I'm a, I'm arrogant and I, I, I just didn't think they were going to catch me. And so, no, I didn't put away any money. Who said that the other day? I, I had, was it a police officer? Oh, I think it was my probation officer said to me. I think all of you guys put money away. I think she said I want. I didn't. And she actually, I think she said it was. I think it was my probation officer who said that. That's your story too. You get off probation though, right? Yeah. Wouldn't that be? A, I always joke with with Jess. Wouldn't it be amazing if, like, the day I got off probation, I, I I said, "All right, get in the car," and we drove to the airport, got on a plane, and she was going, "Where are we going? Where are we going?" And we flew somewhere like the you know, the Cayman Islands or something and walked into a bank and boom, there was tons of money in there. And I was like, all right, it was just, I had to wait, you know, would that would be so great. That's not going to happen. All right. So are you both still on probation and how much more time? Um, Jess is off probation. She got off early 
uh, early termination of her probation. Been off for a while. She's been off for a while. She don't, you only have what, two years, three years? I had three. I got off like two, roughly a year and a half, two years. Yeah. Yeah. So she got off at the, like the halfway point. Um, I put in for early termination and got denied because I still owe just shy of 600,000, or sorry, just shy of 6 million. So because I still owe money, they, the probation office told the judge, we don't recommend that he be taken off probation because it's our policy that if they still, if a, if a, you know, if a defendant still owes money, we don't recommend he be taken off probation. Their fear is that you're off probate while you're on probation, they can continue to make you pay every month. But when you're off, you, you don't have to pay anymore. I mean, you still owe the money. There's a huge, there will be a huge judgment out there. It's not mandatory though, but they can't do anything. Like if you said, I'm not going to pay, then there's not much they can do. So they say, Oh, we should keep them on probation as long as possible. I've been on probation, not quite four years, a little three and a half years. I got about 18 more months to go. Roughly 18 months to go. And he can travel. He just has to ask for permission. Right. Yeah. I travel any I pretty much travel. I can travel pretty much anywhere for work. But and I I because Jess and I just got married when my probation officer was here, I told her I we I would like to go on we'd like to go on a honeymoon at some point. And she said, that's, she said, that's fine. As long as it's within reason, she goes, as long as it's like, oh, you're, you're going to take three weeks in the French Riviera, then she goes, then that's going to be an issue. It's like, where'd that money come from? You can't spend that kind of money. You should send that money to restitution. She, she said, as long as it's with, you're going for a week and it's within reason. She said, I don't have a problem with that. And I've traveled outside the United States. It's just anytime I travel outside the United States, I have to get permission from my judge. It's that's beyond the, um, purview of my probation office. Somebody wants to know what my story is. I just finished writing Jess's story and we're putting pictures together for her story and I'm going to put it on my website, hopefully in the next couple weeks. It should, it should be on the website. Jess's basic story is she was, um, selling, or distributing uh, meth in Okeechobee. And there was like 60 people on the conspiracy. And um, it was basically her and a group of girls that were a, a group of women. You know, I say girls several times in the, I would say girls in the story. Oh, okay. That's fine. So uh, for the main, she, she was basically, there was the main guy and she was just underneath him. And, you know, there was a huge, it was like the largest bust in Okeechobee hi history. And there were 60 people indicted and Jess ended up um, pleading guilty and got like five years and went to prison and did the drug program. I wait, no, you got six years, six years. You five. did five. No, I got five. And you did what? Three and a half, four. Mm -hmm. She did like roughly four years and got out and met me in the halfway house. That was it. You want me to keep going? That's when it my gets, life begins. That's when your life really begins. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> oh. All right. This guy again. No, just kidding. Another good one. If I was in the States, what do you think you have? What do you think would have been my sentence? Oh, if you were in the Senate, if, if you were in the States, I think he did, was it half a million to a million or something? It was like a million dollars, I think he, he did. I think you probably would have gotten first-time offender. You'd have done some time. You'd have probably done gotten 24 months. Probably gotten about two months, about, about, about 24 months on a million dollars. And one million. Yeah, one million. He got one, what'd you say? One million, yeah. Yeah, one million. Okay. So yeah, it was, you would have gotten probably, I'd say 24 months, may, no more than 36 months and probably gotten two years paper when you got out, you'd have taken the drug program because you just said, Hey, I have an alcohol problem. You would have taken the drug program. You would have probably gotten six months, halfway house. You would have done 18 months to, a, to two years, 18 months to two years on three years. If it was two years, you'd have done God less than a year. 
but you'd be a felon for the rest of your life. Unlike Canada, where he's now serving his sentence in his living room with an ankle monitor and he won't have a felony when he's off his little year long probation, which is ridiculous. Really? What are we doing? Just share your story of Matt in the halfway house. We have heard Matt's side of things. What's the real story? The real story. That is the real story. Stop. 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 That is the real story. Go ahead. Let's hear your story. For the sake of me having a good night for the rest of the night, we're going to go. That is the real story. That is the real story. She's going to tell you. Wait, what's the real story? The real story it is that we met what the second day, first day or second day I was at, at after I got there, we had lunch. Or I mean breakfast. I was introduced to her at breakfast, but I'd already seen her, and I we eventually exchanged phone numbers and started texting. And um, you were going to come to see me at the gym that time. We were texting back and listen. We're texting at. 12 o'clock at night, 11 30, 12 o'clock at night. She's flirting with me. That's not true. It is absolute. That is not First of all, true. She's sleeping in a room across the hall from me and she's texting me at 11 and 12 o'clock at night. It's flirting. You're flirting with me. It's flirting. If that's flirting, you're, she's talking about coming is to this see the me. Is story at the you're telling everybody? This is the truth. This is the story. You're flirting with me. I we wasn't were, even interested in you are in the you halfway serious? house. Serious. You, what about, okay, listen, let me give you one example. At one point she got off early. She was coming home from her job, got off early and wanted to come to the gym. To the to gym, s- to the gym. I like to work stop, out. Stop, I want to see the gym. I didn't want to go back to the center. Why did to have see to, me? No, no, wait, wait. No, why does it have to be more than look, that? Exactly. To see me. And she told me in her mm. mind she was like, because she already thought I was good looking. She I, liked me. She thought I was funny. You, are you saying that's not true? I said you had a nice butt. I didn't say you were good looking. But you were good. You're very handsome. This is going to be a problem. Okay. So then, so this, this is why I'm telling you. Here's the thing. One, on and this the, is why I'm not telling you. On the way to the gym, she was actually going to come to the gym. She thought to herself, if I go to the gym, what if I, have sex? what if I end up having sex with this guy? Like what, what, what? If you don't like me, then that doesn't even enter your mind. That doesn't even come up. We're already flirting with each other at the halfway house, joking around. I don't think we were flirting. I think we were. I think we were just hanging out. (sighs) Listen. She's in denial. Like... What are you thinking? No. Anyway, what what else? What what are we doing? What's going on? It's the same thing when we went out to dinner. What what do you mean? Six months later? Six months later. Because on the way there, she's saying, I am not gonna kiss this guy. I am not gonna kiss him. I wasn't. If you're not thinking and you're not interested, then you're not even thinking I'm not going to kiss him. And we did end up kissing. We didn't make, up, make, out all, make it out all night. I, I, I can't even read right to, now. No, no. What? Yeah, forget. No. I don't know what this guy, he keeps posting this over and over. What is it? It's uh, something about listening to, it's insanity with his daughter that's less than a month, a month old. Okay. Now she knows the story, but he posted it like 10 times. Okay. Well, click on it. You guys are funny. Have you ever met? Oh, wrong one. I don't know where it went. Greg fed my daughter's less than one month old, less than a month old. We listened to it's insanity. She knows that Frank was, was almost, almost there. there. That's All right. Funny. It's not a question, but cool. What? Just saying. 
Are you able to write about crime from the point of the history of a scam of scam artist at the art of fraud? That is a really horribly formulated, it's like a complicated. It, it, that's sentence. A, yeah, that that sentence is. Am, am I able to write? Can I mean, you, I could write about anything. Can you dumb it down a bit? Yeah, I, I don't understand the question. Like, could I write that? I'm, I'm, I mean, I could. I don't understand that. That's the question is. Oh, this guy. He says it doesn't matter. You're married now. That's what I tell him all the time. But she doesn't have a degree in fine art. No. Listen, I'll tell you something that happened at the halfway house. It still to this day makes me mad. Don't do it. Still makes me mad. There was a guy named Bobby. Okay. Bobby's a white guy who's like 40 years old with dreads. He's a rapper, too, by the way. Thinks he's a rapper. He really puts it, installs pools. So he's at the halfway house. And so one night I used to come home from when I would come home from work, Jess and I would would eat dinner together, right? Like we'd sit there and talk while I while I ate because she would have already eaten. So one night I texted her and I said, hey, I'm going to be home. Do you want to have dinner? And she goes, I can't. I'm going to bed early. I'm really tired. I was like, oh, OK, good night. And so then I come home or come back to the halfway house and I walk in and she's sitting at the table with Bobby. To this day, that makes me mad. Listen, I don't know the reason. Like, I was super tired, and I was going to bed. And I w- there had to be a good reason I was out there. And when Matt walked in and I saw him, I knew that he was going to be angry. But... Be- you know why she knew? Because she because liked I me. Told- and she- because she didn't want to make me upset. Because she liked me. And she didn't want to hurt my feelings. And that's when what that's what it had to be. I have a good heart. I don't want to oh hurt anybody's gosh. feelings. Like, you she was eating with Bobby. You it's were, a white guy with dreads. I wasn't eating who thinks with he's him. a rapper. Why are you doing this? It's I I it's I'm on I'm still I was not still, eating don't with touch him. me. Um <laughs> it's, oh. all right, let's move on. He's now he's upset. We're gonna have to go out. To, I'm gonna take you out to eat. You wanna go out to eat, baby? Where do you want to go? You want to go forwards? Do you want to go salad? I love you. No, it was we, nothing. I wanna, I wanna Stop. Go, Kiss me. I want to go to Outback because we have a gift certificate. Kiss me. I love you. I love you. Uh, let's do this. This guy, I don't know what's going on. Are you actually reading these? Are you still mad? No. You're still mad over here? <laughs> That some of these questions are from the guys you taught in GED class. <laughs> that, that's that's, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> Let's not talk about Bobby anymore. God, it's going to take me all night just to get him out of this. We do have kids. Click on, I don't know what it is. Okay, yeah. Trying to go down. <clears throat> Either of you have kids or in ideal or in an ideal world, would you like to have kids with each other? So I have three girls and Matt has a boy. Um, and uh, if things were different, like we had. Would what? what? Would we have kids? Yeah. Like yeah, if I was 10, year, if yeah, I was if 10 I, years younger. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm 53 years old. Like I'm going to be like 70 years. What's the guy? Theo Vaughn <laughs> jokes about how his dad was like 80 years old. He was like 13. His dad's like 80 or 85 years old. And they, like, you know, he could, can't play with them or pick them up. Like, I'm too old to have kids. It's, you know, it's, yeah, that, that's insane. Did you ever meet anyone that used multiple citizenships to commit crimes internationally? Did any, did any use that as a way to get out of serving time either here or overseas. So before I took off on the run, I remember a friend of mine had a friend who had gone to college and the person was, he was Iranian. And I remember we were going to have him, he had perfect credit. And he was, his plan was, he said, which this happens all the time with like citizens that come over for college. And he, he had like a social security number for some reason. So 
in his country, like Iran will not extradite one of its citizens to the United States. Like they don't, they won't do it no matter what. So he was thinking he was going to come. He was in the United States. He had perfect credit. He said a lot of what they, what they'll do is he said he was going to run up his credit cards, put like $60,000 worth of credit card debt and then leave. And just, he said, I was like never coming back anyway. He said, I'd have bad credit. That wouldn't be a big deal. He was like, but he, he never had any plans to come back. And he was going to take that money and buy like a really nice house in Iran, which for 60 grand in Iran, it's like buying a $400,000 house here. So we were actually, he had perfect credit. We were planning on him buying a couple million dollars worth of property, pulling out 500,000, 600,000, give him two or 300,000 and let him leave. And then we were going to keep a couple hundred thousand for setting up the scam. And so even if federal charges were filed against him in that particular scam, they wouldn't have been, but because they wouldn't, the, the banks wouldn't have figured it out regardless, even if they were, it wouldn't matter because he would be in Iran. There's nothing they could do. So had I thought about it, I thought about it. I just never did it. I feel like you've covered this question. What? A hundred times. How much oh. did your hair transplant cost? I had two hair surgeries. Each one of them cost seven thousand dollars. So it was fourteen thousand dollars. This guy. I don't know what. I could definitely see Matt with a mullet, just like Theo. Did he have a mullet? He does have a mullet. Does he? Yeah. He's hilarious. What are you doing? Well, I'm looking at the guy's picture. Oh. Like he's facing, looks like the Washington Monument, or maybe that's the Lincoln Monument. I think it's the Lincoln Monument. Oh, I see. Yeah, see? But he's not like, he's not facing it. Hmm. <laughs> I love you. What are you laughing at? Nothing. When you have a guest that bores you, what do you do? Yeah, I guess it bores you. Do you check out? He can't. I, I no, I mean I'm I'm talking to the person, but usually I try and liven it up. I, I, I honestly typically the great thing about the great thing about mo ninety five percent of my guests are they have at least some kind of an interesting crime story. So that doesn't really you know, those those I don't typically get bored. The only, the problem is sometimes I'm doing them, like I'll wake up at, I wake up at like three o'clock in the morning. So I wake up, I come downstairs, I write for an hour or two. Then Jess comes down, she makes coffee. We drink coffee for a little bit. We go to the gym then, you know, so basically like if I end up doing an interview with a, with someone and it's, it's, let's say it's over, first of all, it's over like StreamYard, which is a remote service that I use like Zoom. And let's say I do it at three or four o'clock. Listen, by four o'clock, if I'm doing a Zoom and I've been up since three, I'm exhausted. Like it's exhausting. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. No matter what, you better have an amazing story. There better be good interaction to keep me awake. It's not that the guest is boring. I don't think I really have any boring guests. I'm not. They might have most of the stories interest me. What's what's going on? What are you laughing about? What's happening? What is it? I think I know the answer to this one. If you could share a meal with someone and you met in prison, who did, who would it be? Pete. It would be Pete. It would definitely be Pete. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, uh, that picture is not far off. That's not far off. Only Bobby's more of a, this is a, he's like, how? that guy's kind of, funny he's like you a, guys are hilarious like, bobby's like a seriously hey bro what's up he's not a bro no he's what more is like he? a what up what up oh yeah he's yeah yeah he's what, what are you doing what are you what, doing what, throwing up gang signs get gang signs or Stop. something i don't know you look like you're having a seizure <sighs> all right what time do you go to bed like pretty soon but i have to take matt out tonight yeah, but it's friday so. night so we haven't eaten dinner, so we're going to go to Outback because, you know, it's date night. Is I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> right? But it, that? No, that sounded cute, No, though. it Maybe did. We but we, yeah. Yeah. We need to get friends, like, 
probably semi-normal friends. Normal friends. We don't, we don't attract normal people. Yeah, we don't. Though. Yeah, normal people like, don't want to hang out with no, us. Is that what it is? Yeah. No, normal people don't want to hang out that with makes us. Makes sense. And it's hard to find normal friends like that you could actually go to dinner with that are normal. Dan and Shelly seem pretty cool. Yeah, but they, but they live, live on the so other coast. They, yeah. We need somebody yeah. close. And Dan's super interested in his dog. Like he, the, the 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 attack the attachment that these two have on with their dogs, it's 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 you think it's adorable. It is it's adorable. unsettling. It's unsettling to me. Matt, are you able to share your real estate prison course notes or ethics and fraud from from Jim? Jim Montrum. I bet I wonder if Jim I have it somewhere. But you have to understand, I have boxes and boxes of stuff. Uh, I, I'm, I mean, I've thought about doing like a prison course, like actually, not prison course. I've actually thought about doing like a real estate course and selling the real estate course and just basically not doing a hyped up class that's like, you know, bullshit. Like do a real course that just kind of lays out, you know, here's what works, here's what doesn't work, here, you know, not. I'm not going to do the whole, you can buy a house for nothing down. You know, I'm not going to do all that. Like, anyway, that didn't really answer the question, but. My father and I have the same name and my dad keeps using my social in order to get <laughs> loans and not paying them off. I've told him to stop, but he won't. Is there anything I can do? Call the police. Besides jail. No. Nah. Same. Yeah, yeah. So basically by not calling them, listen, if somebody did that to me, I don't care who you are. I'll cut your throat. Like, you're not taking advantage of me like that. Like you're, 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 you're going to, you're stopping me from being able to own a house, getting a decent vehicle, getting a decent interest rate. Like, and then you're, and you're saying, oh, well, you know, it's my dad. I don't want man. Fuck that dude. Cut that fucking dude's throat. That's not a, that's, that's a shitty thing to do. God, you know what's so funny is I know people that have done stuff like that. Like, but I don't want to call the police. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, well, well, then but, put up with it. Deal with it. Deal with it. I mean, you know, like you know, I'm you want to be a professional victim and let this guy victimize you over and over again. Send that motherfucker to prison. You want you feel bad for him? Put some money on his books. Visit him. Check your Corelinks account. You know, send him some books. Like, this is a guy that clearly clearly doesn't give a shit about you no offense sorry who is the dark web hacker oh god the dark web hacker was this the animated guy the... no right no what was his name who you you're talking about are you talking about brett johnson yes no no not Th this is a guy that like dark web hacker he wasn't oh i think that's what colby called the his name was david like you know and he had a shitty camera and bad service. Yeah, and... I'm saying that was probably the worst interview. He couldn't make it through. Right. And he was um and he he was like on Suboxin or something. Like he was sluggish and yeah, he he you know it's funny too because he actually like texted me today and said he could come by today. Like he's actually was flying in to get a vehicle. In like Naples. Naples is like two, three hours from us, right? Like three hours away? Yeah. So it's like three hours away. And two, even if you could show up here, I, I would have to arrange it. So Colby's here to work all the cameras and do the switcher. And it's like you called, he like, he texted me at the last minute. It's like, like, bro, if you knew you were coming, then you could have given me a day or two and I could have arranged it. But, you know, it's just, anyway. It was a rough interview. It was a challenging interview. Look, he's got that's that's Amadeo. I think that's Amadeo's face. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Scam rehab. Scam rehab. Oh, he changed it. He changed his face. He was drinking a soda or something. Um, if you're if your pops is doing that to you, then he doesn't care about anyone he brings. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Did you ever, did you ever interview Sean Atwood? No, you've never interviewed him. No, I don't think I ever interviewed Danny him. Danny has. Yeah, Danny did. 
Yeah, I should see if I could set I know, that up. I don't up. know why you haven't. Yeah, done I've been that. on his program twice. That's a good idea. I should interview him. Well. Okay. See this one? Yeah. How can somebody do that to another one? Yeah. What a he's, dickhead. What, he's wait, still wait, going which on. One? No, I'm saying he's still going on. How could anyone oh, yeah, do that yeah, to yeah. his I kid? What a dickhead. It, yeah. Right? The guy that asked the question about the boring interview, mm -hmm. he said he only asked the question. Um, let me put it up here. Uh, nope, that's not it. Uh, haha, I saw your face. You were struggling. Yeah. yeah he, he, like, he yawns. He has to, like, hide it. It doesn't do a very good job because you can always tell, like, your face does this weird thing. Yeah, I, I like. Better drink some coffee. The thing is, that guy probably has a pretty good story. He was just extremely monotone and sluggish about the whole thing and didn't really have it well formulated in his mind. What's up, Chicago? What year did you get out? 2019? Yeah, 2019. Oh, we're not talking about that. Sean interviewed interviewed you. Right. I saw that the guy yeah. said y'all thought y'all broke out. Well, let me tell you about we broke out up multiple what are you times. Doing? Multiple times. But it's you know we've already talked about this. What are you doing? I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I know. Okay. Y'all stop trying to start stuff. Oh, heathens. I felt for y'all. It was not your fault. I felt for who? Why does this keep going on? <clears throat> this is not important, but I used to live in Estero, and I think coconut point is there just wondering if you guys have been in that area no no idea where that is what happened to the shitty jeep that you had when you first got out oh, man. listen that that jeep ended up it was horrible um it ended up breaking down Several times, and something ended up happening with the fuel line, and I couldn't drive it. Remember that? Like, I could drive it if I pushed the gas slowly, it would dry, it would start. The you could fuel, I thought it was brakes or something. No, no, that was the fuel line. Mm -hmm. It was the because when you push the gas, so I ended up having to get another vehicle, and I, I had to convince my probation officer to let me get another vehicle. She told me I could only spend $250, I think, on a new, on a new vehicle, and I ended up spending. Or did she say you couldn't spend more than three? I think it was like three hundred, and I ended up spending. I got a payment of like like three hundred and eighty dollars a month, mm -hmm. and I came back and I was like, "Listen, that was the best I could do." <laughs> and she was all upset about it, and um, so I, I ended up refinancing it, like whatever, a year later. But yeah, I ended up getting a brand new vehicle. Luckily, I had good credit. See, if you were happy, I get tired. So, um, yeah. So I ended up getting a Jeep. What do I have? A Jeep a Compass. A Jeep Compass. So I have a Jeep, Jeep Compass. That I would love to get another vehicle now. I would love to get another vehicle, but I. I he, he just wants more horsepower. I just like when I hit my the gas on my car, it goes. <clears throat> but it doesn't do anything. It, it makes, doesn't actually move. Makes a lot of noise. It makes noise, but it doesn't go any faster. Like it's not like you. Hit the hit the gas and it throws your head back even a little bit. Like he's not even a little bit. So, uh, but I almost never drive either because I almost never leave my house. Like we we just drives typically to the gym in the morning and back, and then I don't even go outside. Like I'm in I'm inside almost all day. Probably leave that leave the house once a week. What is this? Weird, random. What is the best purchase you've made under a hundred bucks for your office media space? 
I don't think there's much you can buy for no, under a hundred dollars. Really Maybe these things. Maybe these things. <laughs> oh, I love you. What? Somebody said Jeep Compass. That's a chick car. <laughs> it is a cheap. It is. It is a chick. It is a chick Jeep. It is. I don't know. No, it it doesn't look so so girly with the black rims. Listen, the rims are they're not black rims. They're basically I have they're not hubcaps. four they're not hubcaps. They they look like spare tires. My car has four spare tires on it. Listen, it's embarrassing, but it's fine. I'm happy. I mean, I'm happy. Everything works on it. Uh, everything works on it. It gets good gas mileage. I never really drive it, so I need an oil change. Do you already? Yeah. I need oil change. Oh. And two of my tires. I need two new tires. But it's not forever. They want you to work on the Tate thing. Something somewhere I saw. What, like do a, a that's what Colby sent me a thing saying like I should do a, a Tate video on tape but i mean i don't know anything only two things happened the guy got out and he's at home like i mean we won't know anything for a while for a while i'm sure tate's gonna come up like if tate's probably gonna come out with a video explaining what's going on and then i could do a reaction to that but at this point what do i know i don't know anything it would just be me regurgitating the same stuff that has already been said for the last three months and ending it with, and he just got out. He and his brother just got out. Like, that doesn't tell you anything. Anything else? What is this? Mm, I lost it. I don't know. Are you still in contact with any of the correction officers? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was your never bit in, in the, the pen. pen. Bro, I can't go to a pen. He would never. That's not true. I was in the pen. I was in the pen for a day in the shoe. In the shoe by yourself. I was in the shoe by myself in a pen and in the pen for one day. So I was in the pen. You can't let Technically, I was in the pen. Someone as pretty as you on the yard. Yeah, I know. They don't want me in the yard. I'd be running that place. Oh, they they know you. it. They want they... you in the yard. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, no, I don't talk to any, 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 like any prison guards. Like I don't no. but we do have the, uh, the stone sailor. He was in, he was, oh, the yeah, 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 the stone sailor was at Coleman, but I don't ever remember seeing him when he was there. He wasn't there when I was there. Oh, he was at the men's. Yeah, he, yeah. Look, I don't, he said he worked below, but I don't ever remember seeing him. And there's so many guards. I didn't even pay attention. You don't even pay attention to the guards. You have to, you basically have almost no interaction with them. What, what's Do it? we plan on staying here in Florida? Any long-term goals? I think we stay, plan on staying in Florida, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm a Florida girl. I love Florida. I'd, I'd rather be here than anywhere. So, yeah, that's my plan. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to go anywhere, right? No, I don't have anywhere I want to go. Right. I like it here. The only other place I really liked was um, Charlotte, North Carolina. I lived in Charlotte. That was great. Oh, yeah. What is it? This is interesting. Loving the channel. Curious about Howl's Juan. Any plans to make some videos again with him? N no, this came up uh, last time. I basically Juan is teaching a credit course, and he wanted me to start teaching a credit course also in English, and he wanted the two of us to do like um, ads together and that sort of thing. And then suddenly, we, you know, we were texting. He was supposed to show up one day, one day, and then suddenly he said, "Oh, I'm sick. I have food food poisoning. I can't come." And then I texted him after that, how are you doing? Never had, never heard a response. And then texted him maybe a couple days after that, hey, what's going on? Are you okay? What happened? When are we meeting? Never heard from him since then. But, I, but he continually posts. So it's not like he got sick and died. Because if you go to his Facebook page, he posts all the time. He just 
stopped returning my texts. Why? I have no idea. What happened? I don't know. I don't know what happened. But he's making supposedly, well, not supposedly, he's making great money teaching these courses. I wanted to try and work with him and do something. I have no idea what happened. And, you know, I'm just like, I'm not going to, there's only so many, you can only kind of pursue someone so long before it's like, okay, look, you know, I sent you two, three texts. You're not interested in talking to me. That's fine. That's it. So I don't know what happened. There was never a discussion. There was never like a, a dispute or an argument or anything. I don't know what happened. Juan's jealous of your hairline. This is probably true. Um, what are you doing? Checking it? I just look at the pictures. I'm just leaning into oh, the pictures. Oh, sorry. Oh, I thought you were looking here. No. Um, okay. Well, we want to do like a few more? Yeah, let's do a few more and then we got to go to dinner. Have you ever met Victor Pout? The Russian arms no. smug, no? Bout. Um, it's not it pout. Says, oh, okay. Yeah, I know. Okay. Sure. Um, no, but I mean, I've seen a, I, I watched a, actually, I think I watched a documentary on them and a, like a s short episode on some show. Uh, I've read, you know, two or three, I don't want to say a book, but I read a section of a book that was, that dealt with him. And, uh, but, but no, I, I never met him. He was locked up in New York. And, um, of course now he's back in, uh, now he's back in, um, Russia. He's okay. the one they traded Brittany Griner for. Oh, okay. Right. I mean, shoot, he basically, the Lord, the movie, the Lord of War is loosely based on Victor Bout's story. It is very loosely, but, uh, yeah, Victor Bout probably, he actually has an amazing uh, an amazing story. I'm sure there's probably several books about it, but no, I've never met him. Can you explain what hot checks are? Not hot chicks. Yeah. Hot checks. I mean, what's a hot check? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Should I say, mention the, the, the chick? Oh, I was just thinking about that, but we, we haven't gotten anything. Have we in the mail? Have you checked I didn't the mail? Check the mail today. Right. I can't well, we'll check here. today. So listen to this. Are you gonna? Yeah. Why? I'm, not, I'm just gonna end up telling you know fucking with her anyway. This is just okay. Well, what? So, if so uh, let me tell you. I had somebody. I had this. What if what? What are you cons? What? What am I doing? You were like ninety five percent. It's not legit. I'm. I'm not. I'm one hundred percent. All right. Then go ahead. You, this is what's so funny. This would work on you. Stop like, it. No, listen, it wouldn't. Listen. It actually probably so would. It would because I, I tell no you clue. right now, this would work because this this woman contacted me and she's like, hey, uh, I love I love your paintings, but I can't buy it. I don't have a credit card. I can't buy it through Etsy. So she wanted to get like a Marilyn Monroe. And I was like, oh, OK. And she said, I've got my uncle can mail you a check. And I said, OK, that's fine. I gave my my address, my mailing address. And then a couple of days later. She came back and she said, oh, no, um, I have an issue. My uncle issued, got, went and got a cashier's check. But instead of for $300, he sent you a check by accident for $950. It was a mistake. He accidentally added my cousin's my, money in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her cousin had an extra $650 that he added on to it. I'm so sorry, but I want to get the painting as quickly as possible. And I trust you. You can, can you go ahead and just deposit the cashier's check and send me the difference and send me that, send my cousin the difference. I, like she doesn't even want, like, I don't even want the difference. You can just write my cousin a check for the difference. And of course I was like, yeah, no problem. Just mail me the check because, and, and keep in mind when I'm reading the, when I'm reading the, the email she sent me, Jess is sitting in the car and I'm like, I go, listen to this. And I'm reading the email knowing it's a scam. And Jess is going, it's like, right, right. She's like, right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's right. fair. Like she's, she's awfully trust. Like, well, she's pretty trusting. Like, what are you going to do? Like what, what, what do you think? What were you doing? 
No, you were like, it sounds like a scam. And I never even thought that it right, was a scam. Right, but you were kind of, when I was reading it, you were kind of like, okay, like, like yeah, oh, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Like, it doesn't make sense. It's a scam. But I think Jess would deposit the check. Jess is the kind of person that deposits the check and mails her a check for $650 because she's thinking, oh, it was just a mess up. No big deal. Just a goof. Where I'm immediately thinking, this is a scam. But I'm laughing about it because it typically something like that works. And what she's hoping, obviously, is she they've made a fake check or, or fake cashier's check. They've mailed it to someone like me. One, I'll mail the painting, which isn't the, the goal of the check. The goal is that I write them a check for $650. My bank doesn't tell me that the check I just deposited, the cashier's check I deposited is fake. They they credit the account right away and they don't realize it's not real. Until a few days later. For a few more days. By that point, they've gotten my $650 check and they've cashed that check. Or they've asked me to wire the money or put it on my ca cash app and then the money or whatever else. And by the time they get it, it's too late to reverse the transaction. And it's just a, you know, it's a, just kind of a common scam. But so uh, this woman, she's been texting me, sending me emails. Hey, have you gotten the money yet? And I'm like, oh, I haven't checked my box. It's probably in there. Like I've just been spinning her and spinning her. So uh, is that a hot check? I don't know if they call that a hot check. I don't know what a hot check is. They said, so what is the scam? The scam is that they mailed a fake check. Right. Matt I deposits it. By the time it clears, he's already mailed them $650. A few days later, the bank finds out that it's not a real check, and he's out $650. Right, right. Tedford, nice. Um, right, so, yeah, because my bank account has been open for so long they don't actually people think oh no they get that money from the other bank no they don't that takes eight or ten days so they may not figure it out for five to ten days by that point i've already given her 650 dollars, and the bank reverses the charges and i'm screwed mm -hmm. that's the scam and by knowing me i probably would have also mailed her the damn painting yeah oh like because I'll, I'll just box up the painting right away and stick it in the mail so you're out a thousand bucks now i'm out a thousand bucks so but yeah uh, that's the basic scam. And I wouldn't have cashed the check. I think you wouldn't you let me. No, I know. That. <laughs> it's not the point. No, but, it, they, but a, it works all the time. Like yeah. if you look it up, like we even, like I was trying to explain it. And I, I immediately looked it up on YouTube and there were all these. It was called. I don't know. Scam, a certain scam. I don't oh, remember. cash. It was like over. Uh, whatever uh, it was, it was the, I forget the name of the scam, but they were called like it's a, it's a common scam where they buy of an item from you and say, "Oh gosh, I accidentally wrote the check for too much money. Go ahead and cash it and just mail me the money back." So yeah, but I was going to keep spinning the chick and spinning her and spinning her, you know. And, and the other thing is like, look, like law enforcement doesn't even really look into things like uh, scams like that. Like it's such a small amount, like. Mm -hmm. I can't find it. So anyway, yeah. So that's Tedford. It. Tedford, what's going on? Wow, silly scammers. You can't scam the secret service most wanted. When will they learn? You know what's really what's really funny is uh yeah, I, I mentioned this, I think I mentioned this earlier, is that I'm supposed to talk at that at a convention with like and tell my story basically the FBI is going to be their secret service and all these investigators like how like what an amazing what a, that's such an amazing turnaround that I would be going to a convention with over a thousand law enforcement officers and telling them my story like that's to me that's like insane the idea that I was laying in prison a few years ago thinking you know what am I going to do when I get out that that's that's uh, that's a pretty crazy turn of events Somebody said, isn't that wire fraud? What, if you cash the check? I mean, they probably could charge you with mail fraud and wire fraud. But the problem is it's such a dink amount. And these guys aren't stupid. Like, they're not doing it in their name. They're not going to get caught. So, yeah, it's definitely a scam. It's just whether or not it worked. It, they're going to actually catch these people or not. What are you doing? I was looking at what uh, Tyler said. He actually tracked these people down. He look. 
He actually looked the guy up on Instagram. Oh, oh no, nice. this is the hair thing. Oh, nice. Nice. What's for dinner? Outback Steakhouse. Outback, yeah. Because we went to Carrabba's. I'm doing this again. Because we went to Carrabba's and... We went to Carrabba's? Not Carrabba's. What was it? Uh, Bonefish. Bonefish. Went to Bonefish. We've been there twice and ordered broccoli. And you get the broccoli and I swear it's like they don't only cook it. Like it's it's like freshly cooked broccoli or freshly cut broccoli. It's hard as a rock. Even when you, we sent it back, they chopped it up in little pieces and cooked it and gave it to us. And now it's all, it's like chopped up. Well, it, it was it's still hard. Still hard. Like it's like they didn't they like how how can you go over and over again and they don't understand you have to actually cook the broccoli to make it semi soft. All right, a few more questions. Okay, serious this time. Um, do you think Johnny Mitchell is legit? No. I mean, I I I, I don't. I. Oh, she mad. <laughs> <laughs> Because I want cooked bro, I want you to cook my broccoli, bougie baby. So the the problem with this guy's stories are, he's a low level drug dealer, who, you know, like didn't go, like he didn't go to a pen, like all the things that he says are so over the top, outrageous, they don't make sense. Like anybody who's been to prison realizes, like your stories are insane, like. I don't have these types of stories. And I spent three years in a medium. He's talking about, you got to fight every day. I saw two guys get punched in the head and they both of them died just from the punch. Uh, uh, you know, it's like, what are you, bro? Come on, man. What, what are you doing? Like I, I've spent time with guys that were in, in, in pens in in federal pens, pens in New York, pens in Chicago, uh, state penitentiaries in, in California. Like, Nobody has these ridiculous stories. Like and his stories about the cartel are always off. It's like the truth is, you're a he was a low level drug dealer. That's it, and he came out and completely spun this insane story that people that don't know any better are buying. So it's it's you know so I I don't I don't buy it, and I hate to say that because I hate to say that anybody's story isn't isn't true, but. Because I've had people say stuff like, you know, oh, you're lying. That's not true. But the truth, but the prop thing about me is like, you can look my stuff up. Like, there's tons of newspaper articles. There's all this, um, all, all this media. There's media. There's there's TV shows. Like, I mean, like if I said, hey, I was I was on the run from it was from the Secret Service and FBI. Like, there's 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 50 articles about it. This guy's got nothing to back him up, and he wasn't even at the same at the at the penitentiaries that he said he was at like he was at the pen but he wasn't at the he was at the facility but not at the pen where because I, I looked into some of it like he wasn't at the he wasn't in a pen he was at like the the low at the same facility like it doesn't make sense like a lot of his stories just don't make sense i like this comment Yo, props for, for reading and answering a lot of these questions. Most YouTubers act as though they're inconvenienced or too good to read and respond to questions and comments. No, man, this is, this is easy content. This is easy. You just read the questions and, and I try and answer questions in, you know, in the comment section as much as possible, but sometimes I get so busy, I can't. And then the times when I do it, it's like we're working. Jess and I are together. And I'm sitting there playing with it and I'm working out and she's like, give me the evil eye. It's like, okay, you know, I can't like, and then, or you lay down at night and I think I'm going to answer some at night and then and I, I get sleepy. I answer five or 10 of them. And it's, this is actually easier than going in the comment section and answering them. You good? You want to keep good. going? No. All right. Yeah, we can keep. We you want to do a couple more? I'm, I'm sorry, we get we got to go eat. We have to go eat. All right, so real fast, uh, Danny's podcast. Yes, I'm sure he will go back on Danny's podcast. Do you see this? What? Why single moms wouldn't dating single females have less baggage? Why does that? Listen, listen. I don't have a a thing for dating single moms. That's what that that is. Like I don't have a thing for dating single moms. I just. 
it's that what I was dating. American greed made him out to, right. American, like, to be as bad or... Yes. When American greed and these companies like Dateline went out... So when I got arrested, there was a big thing about single moms. Like there was a whole national thing. This went on for a few years though. Single moms need to be protected and taken care of. And it was always, oh, she's a single mom. Like it was, there was always this big, you know, victim thing about single moms. And so they focused on Cox, you know, like I only dated single moms or I took advantage of single moms. Like you don't really hear anything about single moms anymore. No. It was a big thing for a long time. So, but back then that was, that's when that was the single moms, you know, whatever, uh, uh, media blitz for, you know, single moms being needed to being protected and being victimized. So they did a whole thing on how Cox would prey on single mothers and convince them to commit fraud. And then he would take the money and let them go, go to prison. The truth is, is that he prayed on everybody. I prayed on everybody. Yeah. If you looked at it, all the women I dated, like, honestly, during the time period, let's say I dated eight women, probably only five of them actually had kids and they were all in their thirties. To, 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 so a woman in her thirties that didn't have a, a kid is, is very rare. Like most women have children by the time they're thirties. So these chicks just happen to have kids. And honestly, two women went to prison. There's probably five or six of them committed fraud. All right, this one's for the road. Thanks for the interesting perspectives. For your, what, what is it? For your interesting perspectives. It's spelled it's, wrong, baby. But, okay. Okay. I don't understand why it's going. interesting. I appreciate it. Thank you guys very much. Why are you doing that now? Oh, no. <laughs> it's new. Okay, so. Thank you. I appreciate it. We're going out back steakhouse. Yes. And uh, we're going to get some steamed broccoli and that's cooked. That's cooked. That's, well, yeah, that's cooked. There's butter. And what else? What do you want? Fish or steak? Fish or steak? Yeah. And fish or steak. And um, I might might eat some bread. They got that pumpernickel bread. Mm -hmm. Might eat some bread. All right. I appreciate it. Get drunk. We don't drink. We don't drink. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. And uh, I, I do appreciate you guys um, checking this out. And good night. Thank you very much. Good night. And there. <laughs>